from the shadows. They have been lurking. For decades, their operatives have worked to sow seeds of discord around the globe. The Great Kerbin Conflict saw the world united against them. But now, Kerbin, in its current state, could not be any more divided. This is Echo 3, and let's continue discussing the Cold War. Although the last Great Kerbin Conflict did not turn out in their favor, they already made plans for the next war. Through the use of extraordinary technological marvels, they were able to move most of their industry off-world. And now, with the use of Kraken technology and rebuilt forces, it's time to strike. Last time, it took the combined forces of East and West, of Communist and Capitalist, to defeat them. But now, they are more divided than ever. With the new, rebuilt fascist military, Kerbin doesn't stand a chance. The world is ripe for conquest, and the fascists are ready. The first attacks will focus on the greatest threats, the Communist and Secan space centers. Through the use of clever deception, the fascists were already able to get the Communists to recently attack the space center. Now its defenses are weak. With the use of laser and Kraken technology, the fascists have made major upgrades to their former equipment. The Secan Space Center clearly was not ready for rocket planes descending from orbit. Although, fascist pilots must be careful. These Secan aircraft are surprisingly capable. Although relying on conventional technology, this Secan equipment is remarkably capable. And more than that, this Space Center seems to have the pilots capable of taking full advantage of what their equipment can do. It would seem that targeting this Space Center was a wise choice for a first target. Intelligence indicates that veteran test pilot Johnny Kerman is flying this K-16. He is one of the Central Kerman Alliance Network's best pilot. But it is likely he is no match for these laser-equipped fascist comet planes. Johnny attempts all manner of evasive maneuvers, but he has no experience in dodging lasers. After taking repeated hits, Johnny is amazingly able to recover. This, however, is a good test of fascist technology. If it can beat the best that the Central Kerbin Alliance Network has, then the rest of the world should easily fall. Johnny continues to dodge as best as he can. The excellent maneuverability and high thrust-to-weight ratio of his aircraft has given him a chance. But the lasers keep coming. How long can Johnny hold out? After another series of well-placed shots, Johnny is unable to recover and crashes the plane. With the engine remarkably still firing, but Johnny unconscious, it rockets itself out towards the ocean. The fascist comets fire a few more bursts at it. But the plane's fate is sealed, and Johnny crashes into the ocean. It has been decades, but once again, the fascist air force is downing Allied planes. With their military rebuilt with the latest in fascist technology, will the disunified world have any chance of standing against them? According to the fascists, this is all part of the plan. It took all of Kerbin uniting against them in order to defeat the fascists last time. But now, with the globe so fractured, and with fully operational Kraken technology, Kerbin doesn't stand a chance. Kraken technology is dangerous if one doesn't understand fully how to take advantage of its power. Both the Central Kerbin Alliance Network and the Communists both made attempts to figure it out, but neither of them were successful. The Communists were able to discover some of the fascist first attempts at utilizing Kraken technology. They discovered a wreck near Kerbin's North Pole and another one near the Mun's South Pole. But those were merely early prototypes. But it was with the use of Kraken technology that many fascist scientists and some of its leadership were able to escape 
and thus they were able to escape to a habitable moon in the jewel system. And there, for these past many decades, the fascists were able to rebuild their forces, attempting to rebuild and improve upon the best technology from the last war. Concurrent with the attack on the Central Kerbin Alliance Network Space Center, other forces are moving in on the Communist Space Center. With both the Central Kerbin Alliance Network and the Communist both capable of reaching the mine, their space centers must be neutralized first in order to prevent any type of counterattack against the staging base on the mine. Only a few seemingly older pieces of Communist armor are even defending their space center. These should be easy targets for the fascist tanks. The fascist equipment is approaching from a lower elevation, and both sides must move closer in order to engage each other. At the end of the last war, the fascist tanks were seemingly far ahead of their time. So, once manufacturing was moved off-world, the production of these tanks was once again resumed. These super-heavy tanks should overwhelm the comparatively much lighter communist tanks. These fascist tanks are more than three times the weight and are equipped with a much bigger gun than the communist tanks opposing them. Although, a bigger gun doesn't do much if you don't actually hit your target. It would seem that the communists have left some well-trained tank crews to defend their space center and the 125mm cannon on the communist tanks is still quite potent. The fascist tanks may be very capable, but currently their gunnery skills are lacking. Fascist forces haven't been training on Kerbin, and their lack of experience on Kerbin's gravity and atmosphere is showing. The fascists are very technologically advanced, but their lack of experience highlights their vulnerability. But the attack on the Communist Space Center isn't over yet. A fascist aircraft is now closing in on the airfield. The Communists launched one of their latest and newest MiGs to counter, the new MiG-29. Just like the Central Kerbin Alliance Network, the Communists have never faced off against a laser-equipped fighter before either. While the lasers are powerful, the tank's armor seems to be holding up for now. While the fascist aircraft focused on the tanks, it has given the MiG a chance to take off. But the MiG isn't armored like the tanks are. But it is better equipped to take out enemy aircraft. The MiG enters into an unrestricted climb, frantically attempting to engage the fascist aircraft. But alas, it's in vain. The lasers have proven too much for the MiG. And now, the fascist aircraft attempts to make one more pass on the tanks. The flying wing dives down towards the T-64 firing its lasers. But the tank's armor is holding up. But the fascist isn't giving up yet. It is maneuvering into another position in order to attack the tanks with its rockets. In the early stages of this invasion, the fascists have proven that they are able to dominate the air. But their ground forces, on the other hand, have made little progress. The armor and other ground forces of both the Communist and the Central Kerbin Alliance Network are both formidable. The rocket attack has failed to do any significant damage. So the fascist aircraft departs the area. For the fascists, so far, the air campaign can be considered a success. But their ground forces have failed to meet their objectives. And for now, the Communists and the Central Criminal Alliance Network both have functioning space centers. This means that the fascists are still vulnerable to a counterattack. If either the Communist or the Central Kerbin Alliance Network had a way to sneak past fascist air patrols, then their staging areas would be vulnerable. So the fascists must either neutralize the space centers or work quickly to transport their equipment down to the surface of Kerbin. But so far, fascist operatives don't know of any means of either the Communist or Secan to sneak past the air patrols. For those defending Kerbin to have any chance, they must stop the fascists from transporting supplies from the Mun down to Kerbin. And ultimately, they must beat the fascists back to wherever they came from. If only the Communists or the Central Kerbin Alliance Network had a means 
to sneak past the enemy patrols and avoid detection. Then they could strike the staging areas and halt the invasion. If only there was a way. I am Echo 3, and thanks for joining me on this discussion about the Cold War. I will see you next time.